Hello, Revere. Welcome to Revere TV. This is Cooking with the Keefs, and we have a special holiday version of Cooking with the Keefs and a very special chef we brought on today, Mike Chiesa, the famous, the absolute famous pizza gain chef in Revere. And he's here to help me show you how to make his infamous pizza gainer. Mike, what are we doing today? Today we're going to make uh, Laura's pizza gainer. Laura's your mom? My mom, yeah. Uh, this is, so, so pizza gainer, if anyone doesn't know, Mike's going to tell you a little bit. It is a very traditional Italian uh, Easter uh, dish that people really like to make. It's very popular around the North Shore, especially in Revere. I make some, but I am half Irish, so I lean on my good friend Mike, who passed on the tradition from his mother, just like we, I did, and he's showing everyone in Revere what well, he has done for many years. Well, actually, it's my grandmother, my mother, and me. Yeah. Uh, and who's next? Who's, who's going to learn after you? Is probably you? my daughter. She always helps out now. Yeah. And uh, so what we got here today is all the ingredients. Uh, we have the regatta. We have all the cold cuts, we have the eggs, we have the farmer's cheese, the fresh cheese, the basket cheese, whatever you want to call it. And then we have our Romano cheese. And then we have our dough. That's a egg, flour, and butter dough that we use for a crust. Now, very, very much like a pie crust with some eggs in it. It's a pie crust, that's right. all it is. It's a pie crust with eggs and uh, all the ingredients. Now we're gonna start off with what? You t well, we, we're gonna. You already made the dough in advance. This takes a little bit of a process, and uh, it, it definitely has a lot of love in it. So you're letting this soften up because you're gonna have me roll. Right. And then yeah. we're gonna make the filling, right? We're gonna make the filling first. Nice big bowl. This is gonna make just about one. One. Maybe oh, no. no. <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill it up in the ingredients. We don't want too much cold cuts, and we don't want not enough cold cuts. It's just the a judgment call. So when Mike talks about cold cuts, he's not just talking about your deli ham and cheese. Okay. You know, what do we have, Mike? Come on. Okay, what I have is prosciutto. Prosciutto. Okay. Prosciutto. I have it cut maybe about an eighth of an inch. Yep. And then I'll take it and I'll cut it into little cubes. Then we have here is the dry sausage, the general dry sausage. And then over here we have boiled ham. And we have supersada, not the hot one. I don't like it spicy. Sweet, su sweet supersada. Sweet supersada, all cut in the same way, at least two hours and a half just to cut everything by hand. You get, um, you know, this is something my, what my mother did, and I'm sure you do, and the same with me. You're cutting so much on these hard meats that you start getting a little callous on your hands. Well, there's a trick to yep. the hard ones. What's what I do is I soak it in some warm water and it gets soft, plus it's easier to take the skin off. Yep. So you de-skin it, and then I'll, I'll cut it down in, in straight portions and cut it into little cubes. Yep. And you don't want them too thick and you don't want them too thin that when you bite into it, you'll taste that particular cold cut. So the great thing about all these ingredients, uh, there's a lot of salt, right? Because it's a lot of cured meats. So we don't really add any salt into the dish I know I don't, Mike doesn't either. He just uses a little pepper. And of course the grated cheese and the, and the dried meats offer enough uh, sodium into the entire dish. So you ready? Yes, I'm ready, okay. you tell me. What we'll do first is get all the regatta in, in, in the... So everyone, and if you, and I, I, I know everyone's gonna really enjoy this. So Re, uh, Revere TV wanted to do this show. We've been trying to put this together for a couple of years now. At least. But you are too, you are, your scheduler is, I mean, you got a full schedule, Mike, so you're always hard to get a hold of. But uh, Mike did uh, his version for the Revere Journal, and they did an unbelievable spread a couple of years back. And I was, I, you were the envy of the town. And you make how many every Easter? How oh, many of these do you we, make? We, a minimum of 15. Sometimes we'll make 20, 22. This year I'm shooting for 22. So this is about six pounds of ricotta. Those are two-pound containers, I believe. No, these are three-pound containers. Three-pound nine, containers. Nine Ooh. pounds of... Nine pounds of ricotta. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna cut up the, fr the fresh cheese. Okay. Let me get the water out of it. Let's so the, the fresh Excuse cheese, me. you strain it a little bit, yeah. and you can just, you can, it comes in a basket, and if you let it sit, you wanna try and get some of that water out. Right. Um, and Mike did a nice job, as you can see right here. I'll drain the rest of this. Little cubes. You wanna do it, Patrick? Go ahead, you can do it, Mike. 
Okay. So this will break up because it's a soft cheese. Absorb the salt. It's really, this is just, uh, when they make this, it's basically milk with they put a little citric acid or, or some sort of a uh, lemon juice and it just cures. Chemist? Ah, uh, you know. They use they use a more of a whole milk and you know it's really nice. It's a they call it farmer's cheese because it's a really simple cheese. It doesn't take much. And you can't get it any time of the year except for Easter. Well, it's not uh, like a cured cheese where it lasts very long because it doesn't have a lot of um, stabilizer in it. Oh, so I, it will go a bit like similar to a, a soft milk cheese. It will go bad. I had to go to four stores to get this. I, I know. Got, and we, I, we, we can't not that I'm plugging New Deal, but we, <laughs> New Deal gets it every year. <laughs> new Deal had it. <laughs> new Deal will have it. There's a couple other Italian grocers, and then of course most large-scale grocery stores tend to have it right around that month of Easter. Yes. Goes good. Also, this this uh, fresh cheese. Goes great with just a little salt, pepper, olive oil, and a slice of tomato. Really nice. Yep. Yes. Maybe a little basil. Oh, I love you. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we're you go. good here, Mike. And this Michael, breaks Michael. up. Michael. <laughs> chef Michael. So today, I am not the chef. I am abs This Mike is the master here. I am his sous chef. Okay, right? here's what we're going to do. We're going to put the eggs in here first. Okay. I don't like... How cracking many? the eggs open and putting them right inside because if you get a bad egg. Amen. <laughs> so you do one egg at a time. Yeah, well, and to no. make sure you get no shells. No shells. And then uh, no shells and no bad eggs. Okay. So you don't so spoil all this good stuff. So How many eggs are we going to use? Well, you, you, it's your recipe. So I used to use about 12 eggs for every six pounds of, uh, of, um, of ricotta. So you have nine pounds of ricotta. So if I was doing my recipe, I'd do about 18. We got them. Okay. All right, so that's four. You get dumped them in there. Five. All right, we're going to dump that. And there's a shell in there. I'm going to make sure I get that out. Take your watch off. I washed my hands and packed No, your clean. watch, because you're going to have your hands in there. I'll take my watch. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. <laughs> He's going to have fun with this one. Okay. Right. So this is, this is a, what is this, 15 eggs in here? 18 eggs. This is 18 eggs, so we're gonna do this one card. These are nice fresh eggs. You can see that they're nice and I firm. I bought them today. They're very fresh, you can tell. Uh, you know, the quality of an egg, you, when they hold together like that, even after you jostle them, it shows you that you got an egg that's pretty fresh. The longer they sit, the softer they get, and the more you'll end up getting those eggs, they'll, they'll start to break. Okay. You need two more, no? We'll do a couple more here. Six yeah, well, more. there's 16 there. 16, and according 18. to your formula, is 18. 18 here. This is 18 here. Yeah, these are nice eggs. Yeah, they're good eggs. We'll put a few more. Everyone, everyone does... Um, I've never seen anyone do an exact, exactly uh, the same recipe. I think this probably, for every family in Revere, or every family in the North Shore, there's a different little tweak to the recipe. So I make mine slightly different than Mike. And a lot of my friends Michael. make them a little different than me. It's, um, it's just the standard because everyone passes down a tradition from their grandmother or their mother or, their, or their, one of their siblings or parents. And um, I'm going to get my hands in there. Get gonna, your hands I in gotta there. i got to do my hands here. All right, now this is Romano cheese. And uh, I just want to get a little bit of flavor in here with the Romano. I freshly... Whoops. All right, we get a lot of Romano now. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Nice clean hands. And you're going to break up the eggs and the cheese, and you're going to mash them all together to make that, um, the it, you know, it's kind of like a custard. It looks too loose. You know? Uh, no, it's going to come together. We'll see. I think it's too loose. No, once we get the cold cuts in there. All right, we're going to put some black pepper. This is a mixed peppercorn. We got the green. We got the pink. What do they call it, Mike, in culinary school? <laughs> I don't what do they call it? Okay, they call it melange. Well, this is I freshly ground all my peppercorns yesterday morning. If you have so, Mike, my you're, own. you you are an unbelievable chef, and you're no, I'm not. But Mike is a master no. of all. He uh, he's a craftsman. He's uh, he's a good uh, carpenter. He's built more most most of the stuff in your own house. Uh, you have your own pizza oven outside. But let's not tell the fire department, okay? No, it's legal. Oh, oh it's legal. Yeah. Okay. okay well, <laughs> I'm just joking with you. It's outside. 
and it's great. It makes great pizzas. It does it's very high. It temperature. does. It really does. All right. Okay. Now the next ingredient is going to be the cold cuts. Okay. What and what we're going to do is, like I told you, we don't want to overpower it with the cold cuts, but then again, we don't want to have less cold cuts per bite or piece. So mix it in well. So what we're going to do is first, I'm going to start with the prosciutto. Okay. So we'll move half of that or three quarters of that. Then we'll do the dry sausage. Evenly mixed. That's about evenly mixed. Because oh, yeah. they're all evenly, all the poundage was the same. There you go. Now this is the supersada. And the boiled hands loose. This looks good. It's loose. It's loose? I think so. <laughs> It'll cook. The eggs, right? That's the only thing that made it. What do you think? Uh, I think you're going to add the rest of those cold cuts in. It's going to tighten it all up. No, I'm just saying what you, it's not overpowered with cold cuts, right? No, no. You want to have a good mix because you've got to get some of the custard and the bites of the meat. Okay, so we'll put the rest of the prosciutto in there. So some people call it pizza gain and some people call it pizza rustica. Nope. What do you call it? Pizza gain. Pizza gain. You know why I call it pizza gain? Pizza gain a pound because every time you eat it, you gain a few pounds, Mike. <laughs> Is that <laughs> Mike right? I never heard that. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> That's that, the that humor. Was, I like that one. See, I can teach you something, you know? Oh, yeah. We're How's it look? There. It's good. Yeah, let's put some more. Yeah, finish it up. Maybe a, maybe a little handful more of the Romano. Really? Yeah, why not? How about the rest of it? No, uh, go ahead. No, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's good. Oh, that's good. Look at that. Oh, what the heck, right? You'll be the judge, Michael. Well, that's what Laura used to do. She'd just pour it in. You so ready? La last year, go ahead, Mike. Last year, I had the fortune of coaching uh, Michael's grandson. Uh, and when I would coach right around the April season, we'd always have baseball games, and both families would always come to practices with the little pizza gainer. And I was like, who is this famous guy making pizza gainer in Revere besides me? And uh, it was Mike, so I was jealous, and finally last year, I was able to cook some with him. You turn your back on the camera? Well, I'm sorry, Michael, <laughs> I'm washing my hands. <laughs> they hear me, the, ca the camera's on you, Mike. I know. All right, next step is we'll roll out the dough. Why don't you mix that up a little more with the brush in it. With the spoon. Right. So we can put this in the refrigerator, let it sit, or leave it out here? No, just leave it on the counter okay. in the corner anyway. So Mike already preheated the oven to 350. Right, 350, okay. an hour for the big pan, probably an hour, an hour and 45 minutes. The little pans, maybe an hour and a half. Just, we'll be testing them. So I'm going to be greasing up the pan while he starts rolling out the dough. So this is going to do, how many tops and bottoms are we doing? Here, Mike? Well, we're going to do one top here and one bottom here. Okay. So I would cut maybe about right here. Cut that in a third? Yeah, uh, yeah, probably a third will cover it. Okay. Now where's our, where's our... Where Rolling pin? No. Flour? No. Grease? I got it. There you go. I'm using Crisco. To line the pan, I'm going to use my hands, they're clean. And the reason for this is so the pie will pop right out of the shell, out of the can, out of the pan. So the dough's a little bit more pliable. Is it? Yeah, oh, this is very, very pliable. The other one's good, a good, 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 good. A little flour, right Mike? Oh, definitely flour. You, okay, so this is like anyway. rolling out a pie crust. Yeah, that's okay. all you're doing. Same thing here. And then we'll measure it with the pan. Uh, so, so pie crust can be savory or sweet. So you think about like a chicken pot pie, or you think about a um, think about a. It's a uh, pie crust. You know? I, I would say it's closer to a pie crust than <clears throat> anything else. But if you if you don't feel comfortable making your own pie crust, excuse me, there's a couple tricks you can do. You can buy it. Just like you buy in the store, you get uh, the brands yeah. that rolls out. That's a, usually a typically a little bit more of a sweet pie crust. So just just be I cautious. Can. You can have a sweeter dough. Or some people use a version of a pizza dough, and a pizza dough is going to be a little bit more uh, bready, like crispy, too crispy. Right, and and um, that's rolling. That's rolling out excellent. This is growing great. It really is. So shocked. 
Now what I'm doing is I put the flour in, and the flour is adhering to the. And now, how thick do you want this, Michael? A little thinner. A little thinner? Oh yeah. Don't be shy. See now we're gonna have to. I didn't know I was getting a full workout today. See now that's that just looks like a cover. We need top and bottom. Yeah, we gotta go a long way. Meanwhile, I'm gonna take some eggs so we could have an egg wash on top of the crust. Now what do you think, Mike? Hmm? I say a little more. We don't want it too thick. If it's too thick, it won't cook, right? No. You're raw. Be all, all the dough. Give me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Look at this, huh? Huh? Look at this. That, that's rolling that's nice. That's wonderful. It really is. No. Okay. Do you pop some of this flour out, Michael? <laughs> yeah, we're going to get rid of it right here. Oh, we'll use that. All right. All right. We good? You're good. All right. Now put it right in. Put it right in. All right. Pull it up. Hey, look at this, huh? You've done this before. A couple times. Drop it in. Okay. So you want it without ripping any holes. You want to drop that it. Looks, that looks. You did a nice job. I'll work for you anytime, Michael. <laughs> take take good, <laughs> take good Friday off. And come I'm, on. Co I'm coming over Good Friday. You know that. <laughs> we all know where everyone will be on Good Friday. I'm not going to use your full address, but we, we'll be on Sweeney <laughs> Ave. You can smell it from the top. Do we have a scraper here? Uh. So while I did that one, I'm going to do the top. The, the, the top. I just lay it. You could, you could fill it up if you want. I go maybe no scraper, huh? Now we got to get the Revere paper uh, TV a scraper. <laughs> Your community access money is going. It's hard to work for Mike Chiesa. Okay. He's going to do a contribution. Why is it the power rack over here? So, Mike, what else do you do during Easter? You, you make a lot of other dishes? You mean for Christmas, Easter Day? Yeah. Uh, well, usually it's, it's the raviolis, make a yep. nice big Sunday gravy. Sunday gravy, all right. Uh, maybe a prime rib roast. Oh, baby. Roasted potatoes, string bean casserole sometimes my son likes, uh, corn. There's one, one thing you won't do at the Chiesa household. You'll never starve. <laughs> You're always going to eat well. All right. Is all that right, good? we're going to fill it. We're going to fill it first. How's that? I think it looks good. <laughs> What do you think, Michael? And how much dough do we use? Hardly any, right? That was, a, that was one third each, two, so two thirds. And you know what I usually do? Sometimes I. I'll beat. trim and reuse, yeah. Yeah, oh, exactly. Of so we're going to fill? We're going to fill. All right. That's why right. I wanted the big giant spoon. We're going to do that, ready? So sometimes I'll even use a. Um, watch this. A scoop. A little, yeah, ladle, little ladle action. All right, so we're mixed up good. Yeah, it did thicken up. Good. Plop right in the middle. Yeah, keep filled. Did you fill all the way, Michael? Excuse me? Uh, I'd leave like it's a half thirds. inch. Okay. There's nothing like the big, thick piece of pizza gainer. That way when you bite into that, you know, you bite into just the center. Oh, a little more? Yeah. A little more, okay. All right, that's, that's, that's fine. Yeah? That's fine. That really is. What do you think? So this is the, the, the base. We're going to add that top crust and right over the top. Let's see how you make your edging. So, how do you, you, so I'll usually pinch them together. Uh, right? I'll start to cut. Make sure that these grow. You want the scissors? Yep. I got them. I got them. And what we can do is. Terrific. We'll rework 
all this other dough. It'll, it just won't be as flaky. Now, you graduated from Johnson & Wales? So? I went to Newberry College. Oh, Newberry I graduated. College. I was going to go to Johnson Wales. I actually wanted to go to CIA in New York. Uh, but, you know, like a lot of us, we like being close to home. And so I decided to stay local. I stayed in Brookline, Massachusetts. And the night, the night you did the uh, Thanksgiving dinner at the Knights of Columbus? Yep. You impressed me. You, you did things that... Probably normal to a normal chef, but I was amazed. <laughs> really, right. I had a hand. How do you want me to flute this? Whatever way you think you should do it, we we do it. All, everybody does a different. I want to see how you do it. I'd like to see how you do it. Well, I usually roll it over. Okay. Okay. And then pinch. Then pinch after. And if you roll it over, you'll trap. Sure. You'll trap it so it doesn't ooze out. Now. In my house, when we do it on on East on uh, Good Friday, there's more than one hand doing it. I have the girls, the cousins, the aunts, and my wife and my daughter and my granddaughter. And each one of us makes our own pizza and has their own way of doing the edges. So it's fun. Everybody gets a kick out of it, and the wine flows, and it gets even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> I witnessed it. And then when all the pizzas are in the oven and we're all done, then we'll sit down and have supper. All I right. was very thankful to be part of that last year, Michael. Oh. It was super fun. My parents always had people to do guess. Do you add a little water to your egg wash? Well, I don't know. I never do, but seeing that you're the chef. Little, just a little Miss, bit. Master chef. <laughs> Just a little bit, just to thin it out a little bit. Okay. And you know what's good about a nice thick edge crust? When you bite into it, mm -hmm. you're, you're getting a, the flavor of, see, it's not only the ingredients, the crust is nice. Oh, the crust, would, yeah. that, that's usually the differentiator. So I usually, we can use a paintbrush, you can use a little damp towel. Well, we forgot the paintbrush, you might as well say that. Well, <laughs> we forgot the paint, paintbrush. So we have a bench scraper, and a paintbrush to donate to your TV. That's on the next list. All right. You hear that, Bob? Paintbrush and a uh, bench scraper will be donated to Revere TV in the next 12 months. Or a pastry brush. So you can kind of do these and then set them aside and bake them all at one time. But since we are on TV... So now what we're going to do is give them some air pockets, you know, little... Little slits. You get a fork. If you want. Fork or a knife? Or fork. Do you do? Fork, uh, fork. Fork, yeah. What'd you call me? Yes. And uh, what that will do is let the moisture out the air. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Any good? Looks like a dull fork. <laughs> All right. That's good? Okay, I got six o'clock. You want to throw it in the oven? Look at that. How's that? How many, was, pounds? How many the, pounds is that? The cutting of the meats and the making of the dough is the laborer's part. Right. That's it. This has got to be, I'm going to say, Five nine pounds, eight to nine pounds. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm not supposed to lift more than nine. Oh, man. Don't get me in trouble, Mike. Okay. Uh, six o'clock, get a pencil and paper. we got to time each one. We will time them. All right. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. We're going to remember that. So Now we're going to start on the next one. The next one. Well, we're back, and it's time to pull out the first one. Let's see What's what it looks how, like. How much time do we have on this? I got an hour and a half. We got to watch almost a full movie in between. Yes. What was your... <laughs> Mike, it smells so good in here. I know it does. I'm really. so excited. That's a familiar smell. So you gotta let that... There's going to be a little steam coming out. Okay. All right. All oh. right, number one. Look at this. Woo! Show wow. the audience. Look at that color. Wow. Uh, let's give it the... Look at that. A test. Yeah. Look at that crust top. I like Smell it. Smell it. 
Oh, why? That is, she should only be here. Let's and there's four more in there. Right, we're going to poke it and see if it comes out nice and clean. Ready? All right, let's get a temp. A temp? Yeah. 35, so you got 170. Oh, it's cooked. And growing. It's cooked. Oh, for cooked. For sure. For I, think, I think what will happen. We're at 180. They all dry out and firm up. Right. Well, yeah. that's it. So if you're, a lot of times you do have, uh, and I feel, I experience this every year, depending on the ricotta cheese, uh, depending on the moisture content and the fresh cheese, that can now always change the balance. Right. But I right. think if you cut it now, it'd be too... No, you can't cut it now. You got to let these sit. You got to let them dry out. Do you let them sit overnight? Or do you overnight. Put, overnight. Out in the counter. Well, I put them in the refrigerator okay. late. Yep. So we'll have them out all night. So at least a couple hours on the counter. Oh, definitely. No, yeah. wait until 12. If you put these in the refrigerator really warm, they'll sweat. Yes. And then so they'll get too, what too we moist. do is we finish usually about 6 o'clock. All the pizzas are out of the oven, and we'll let them sit on the big table. And then people will take them home. They'd leave them out, and whatever's left over, I'll, I'll bring up about 11, 12 o'clock that night and put them in the refrigerator. So this looks... Awesome. Perfect. Awesome. I, I, I think it's perfect. And uh, Michael, uh, Mr. Chiesa, Mike Chiesa, I am so thankful for you sharing your recipe with me, but also sharing it with Olive Revere and the joy that brings your family is bringing uh, to everyone uh, watching Revere TV. And you, you know, you're you're a very thoughtful person, very special. I love it. Yeah, we love you too, man. Okay. This is awesome. So we're going to sign off for the Pizza Gaina Easter version, and we hope you all have a wonderful holiday, whatever it is that you celebrate. Uh, but uh, if you want to have some awesome Pizza Gaina. Buona Pasqua. Buona Pasqua. Buona Pasqua. And have an awesome Pizza Gaina, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Okay. Bye-bye now.